This is a once in a lifetime offer of my recently published books in all formats. Please take advantage of these discounts by adding these books to your personal library and be sure to share some of them with your friends and family. Thanks. Fuios is a compilation of four books written by Blake Higginbotham over the past 10 years. It is also a legacy message that will serve to help his sons discover the purpose for which they were born. Please note that this is a special edition book and it is available in all formats, including hardback, paperback, digital and audio. Enjoy! All of Blake's books can be purchased at booksbyblh.me or booksbyblh.xyz. Hello, this is Blake Higginbottom with Home Family Gathering. You are cordially invited to join with us on our Saturday call. If you'll contact me from the website below and send me your contact information, I'll be more than happy to add you to the notification list. Again, this is Blake Higginbottom, and we are looking forward to connecting, communicating, corroborating, and collaborating with you. Have a blessed day. We're going to take up right where we left off in the conclusion of the introduction of a journey, the journey of a well-lived life, which is a recently published book. I'm not going to rehash any of this, but I'm going to go straight for this scripture right here because it happens to be one of my favorite scriptures and one that I'm constantly reminded of. For my determined purpose is that I may know him, that I may progressively become more deeply and intimately acquainted with him perceiving and recognizing and understanding the wonders of his person more strongly and clearly, that I may in the same way come to know the power outflowing from his resurrection, which it exerts over believers, and that I may share his sufferings as to be continually transformed and inspired into his, in his likeness, even to his death, in the hope that if possible, I may attain to the spiritual and moral resurrection that lifts me out from among the dead, even while in the body. Now, that's in the Amplified Classic Bible. Go look up that passage of Scripture. As of late, I've been pondering another question while seriously considering the answer. What is it going to take for me to become all that? Listen, what is it going to take for me or us to become all I or we were predestined to be. Now, this question, it causes me to pause and calmly think about the answer. And it always and it also it also causes my spirit to begin to question the question, am I not all that I'm supposed to be right now? Am I not becoming all that I'm supposed to be? But I believe that this question is because I still see a lot of deficit in me and in us and in the body of Messiah. I still I still see a lot of, of, of that which is lacking, wanting, and coming behind in me and in the body of Messiah. And so the, the this question is not doubting the work that's already been done. This question is not in any way suggesting that I can somehow do something to change my status with him or to uh, in, to in, to to better myself, this question is coming out of the sincere desire to become all that I was predestined to become. The sincere desire to address those things that are lacking, wanting, and coming behind. To address those things that still represent hindrances. But to address those things that are whatever standing in my way. Uh, to fulfilling the practical will and purpose of Yahweh for my life, I want those things to be dealt with. I want those things to progressively be bettered and improved. Now listen to this. Not that I have attained this idea or have already been made perfect. Now this is the Paul the Apostle saying this, but I pressed on to lay hold of grasp and make my own, listen, for that which Christ Jesus, the Messiah, has laid hold of me and made me his own. And I think that's the key. Never assume that you have attained and you have arrived and that you have been made perfect and that you're so much better and aloof and, and better than everybody else because mm -hmm. of your... Don't. 
don't uh, allow yourself to walk in pride and arrogance. Don't allow yourself to think more highly of yourself than you ought to think. And listen, don't allow yourself to think more lowly of yourself than you ought to think. I am a son and I am and I am becoming all that I'm supposed to be in him. That is my faith. The, the, but the reality that we deal with on a, on a daily and a weekly basis is that we fall, are falling way short of the mark. We are, we are settling for far less than who we can truly ultimately become. So what do you do with that conflict? What do you do with that inner dialogue? Do you, do you just allow yourself to coast through life, eventually die and go to heaven, or on to your reward, whether it be heaven or not? What do you do? Do you just kind of, you know, uh, put up with the things that you can't change? Or do you begin to pray about the things that are not changing and allowing Holy Spirit to bring about the things necessary to bring about the change? The que this question is coming out of the reality that many of his children are living far beneath what is available to them through the discovery of sonship. Let's just go ahead and say that up front. You got we have a group of people over here that are would be what I would be what I would say were children of the Lord. They're very childlike in their understanding. They're very infantile in their understanding. They're very immature in their under, understanding. That doesn't mean they're not sons. It just means they're children still under governors and tutors until a time appointed of the father. You've got children that are you've got children in the Lord that that like that that infantile and immaturity is enough because they're just trying to scratch a religious itch. They're trying to fulfill a religious criterion and they're trying to, to basically impress their friends and colleagues. And then you've got those who have moved from being children without understanding to knowing who they are and have discovered sonship beginning to unwrap and unpack their inheritance. And they still know that they're not that in a bag of chips. They have not arrived. They've not attained. They've not been made perfect. They have. They are in a process of being made perfect. And that's spirit, soul, body, and in every way. Because I believe this, my friends, my brothers, and my sisters. I believe that when we when we have been made perfect, spirit, soul, and body that we won't have to be concerned about financially and every other way. We won't have to be concerned about suffering in order to learn because we will have already learned the value and importance of obedience by the things we suffer. The value importance of the value and importance of being obedient has got to be learned. And that's really what that passage of scripture means that 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 Yahshua learned obedience by the things he suffered. That to me is uh, is really misunderstood that he had to suffer in order to learn to be obedient. Well, how is that possible? Because if he was disobedient, he'd have sinned. And how is it possible? Because he didn't sin. <laughs> so that's where I got to, I, I really began to think about that question again. I began to think about that. If he didn't, if he was sinless and he was without sin, but yet he was moved with the feeling of our infirmity, and he was tempted in the same ways we've been tempted and still without sin. How could he have learned obedience through the things he suffered? He was already obedient. <laughs> so that made it that made it clear to me. It made it clear to me that he knew the value of obedience, though he suffered. Look at how much encouragement you found in your relationship with the anointed one. This is one of my this is my second favorite passage of scripture found in uh, Philippians chapter two. Look at how much encouragement you found in your relationship with the appoint, the anointed one. You are filled to overflowing with his comforting love. You have experienced a deepening friendship with, with the Holy Spirit and have felt his tender affection and mercy. So I'm asking you, my friends, that you are joined together in perfect unity with one heart, one passion, and one united love. Walk together in one, harmono one harmonious purpose, and you will fill my heart with unbounding joy. Be filled, listen, be free from pride-filled opinions. Woo! Be free from pride-filled opinions, for they will only harm your cherished unity. Don't allow self-promotion to hide your heart, hide in your hearts. 
Don't allow self-promotion to hide in your heart. But in authentic, in authentic humility, put others first and view others as more important than yourselves. Boy, wouldn't that be awesome. Abandon every display of selfishness. Possess a greater concern for what matters to others instead of your own interest. And consider the example that Jesus, the anointed one, has set before us. Let this mindset become your motivation. So let those of us who are spiritually mature, here we go. Let those of us who are spiritually mature and full grown have this mind and hold these convictions. And if in any respect you have a different attitude of mind, God will make that clear to you also. Only let us hold true to what we've already attained. Here's the key. Is now now I have now up here it says, now that I have not that I have attained this ideal or already been made perfect, but it says right here that it's important that we hold true to that which we've already attained and walk and order our lives by that. Hallelujah. Thank you for visiting us today. You're always welcome. Until next time, this is Blake Diggett, by the way, with Home Family Gathering. You can find all of my books and music at booksbyblh.me and musicbyblh.me. Again, thank you for listening. Home Family Gathering is a listener-supported ministry, and we appreciate your support. Apostolic Kingdom Alliance and Blake Higginbottom are supported by the generous contributions of friends and family. We are grateful for your continued support in the ongoing work of Apostolic Kingdom Ministry. Thank you.